GPS is a revolution in navigation for aviation and many other everyday uses. Satellites in space send signals to receivers on the ground, allowing our precise position on the Earth to be determined. They use clocks that are so precise that they actually provide an elegant proof of Einstein's theories of relativity from over 100 years ago. Relativity begins by focusing on the concept of the speed of light. We humans aren't designed to truly understand relativity because our everyday experiences happen at speeds nowhere close to that of light. If you could throw a baseball 50 miles per hour, we'll climb aboard a train moving at 100 miles an hour, and then throw the baseball. Standing on the train, you perceive the ball moving at that same 50 miles per hour. Forget about air resistance or anything like that. But here's the thing, an observer on the ground, standing still, will clock the speed of that ball at 150 miles an hour. The ball got a push from the train. But light works differently. If you turn a flashlight on, the light energy, made up in waves of particles called photons, travels at about 300 million meters per second, the speed depending on what medium the light's actually traveling through. If you shine the flashlight while standing on the ground, the photons move at that speed. If you're on a train moving half the speed of light and you shine the flashlight, you still perceive the speed of the photons as 300 million meters per second, the same way you perceive the baseball moving at 50 miles an hour. But here's the big shock. An observer on the ground will also perceive the light as moving 300 million meters per second. Unlike the ball, the light energy doesn't get a boost from the speed of the train that makes it go faster. All photons move at the speed of light, regardless of if we're viewing them from the ground or from a moving train. This by itself is jarring and goes against everything we naturally understand about moving around in our environment. But if we think through the implications of this invariability of the speed of light, we can come to some even more startling conclusions. The speed of light, like any speed, is measured as the distance it travels in a certain amount of time. So if the speed of light doesn't obey rules we're used to, this means we have to think about how time passes in a new way as well. To demonstrate time, let's invent a very basic clock. Our clock has two mirrors facing each other with a single light particle, a photon, bouncing between them. We have a detector on each mirror that will count up whenever the photon hits a side. The more times the photon is detected bouncing off a mirror, the more time has passed. We got one of these light clocks up on our satellite and another at a ground station monitoring its signals. As we'd expect, time passes at the same pace on both clocks. The photon bounces between the mirrors at the speed of light. Satellites aren't stationary from our perspective on the ground, though. Just like the train, they're moving. They still don't go anywhere near the speed of light, but they're pretty fast at around 14,000 kilometers an hour. We learn from the train that no matter how fast it's moving, though, we on the ground will perceive the photon as always moving at precisely the speed of light. So as we watch the clock in the sky, we see light moving at the same speed, but since the satellite is also in motion, the photon has to cover a longer distance. It takes longer for that light particle to reach the sides of the mirror. And so the clock on the satellite looks to us like it's moving slower. This is no visual trick of this video either. The pictures of both photons really are moving at the same speeds. We see it if we sync it up here, moving it towards the left, or if we do it again, moving the photon towards the right. But the photon up in the sky, still moving the same speed as ours on the ground, takes longer to make its rounds, having to cover both the distance between the mirrors and the distance traveled by that fast-moving satellite. By the way, if we were on the satellite, looking down on Earth, we'd perceive the Earth as the thing doing the moving, and thus see Earth's clocks going slower. But we're not on the satellite, we're on the ground, and we're the ones using GPS technology, so let's only focus on our perspective here. It turns out that the effect of time dilation, as it's called, as a result of the relative motion of the satellite, causes its clock to appear to us to run 7 microseconds slow every day. We've demonstrated an example of time dilation in what's known as special relativity. It's special because we've set up a special example where two objects, the satellite and our position on Earth, are in constant relative motion to each other. The effects of acceleration, course changes, or gravity aren't considered. Einstein spent another 10 years fleshing this theory out to accommodate physics in the real world, which does involve gravity and other frames of motion besides just constant motion. We may feel that we're standing still while the satellite is passing above us, but we and everything around us is moving through what's called space-time. We've already seen how moving faster through space causes time to appear to slow down, so space and time are linked. 
and large bodies like the Earth warp spacetime. Objects at the surface, like our observatory, move through spacetime and are drawn towards the center of mass by this warping. The satellite further away isn't as affected by Earth's warping. It moves through spacetime more or less undisturbed. The same journey, then, is longer for us on Earth than for the satellite. This warping of spacetime by large objects like the Earth is how Einstein reconciled his theory of relativity with what was already established to be known about gravity. So while before we saw the satellite's clock moving slower with us experiencing stronger gravity, our clocks will actually seem to move slower, or the satellite's clocks will have seemed to be sped up 45 microseconds faster per day than ours now, thanks to general relativity, the effect stronger gravity has on our perception of time. The net effect then of special and general relativity is that the clock on the satellite will be 38 microseconds faster than ours on the ground after a full day. A microsecond doesn't seem like much, but because GPS works by computing the time it takes for a signal to reach us from multiple satellites, this tiny time error can add up to a position error of 10 kilometers after only one day. Fundamentally, GPS is very similar to older forms of navigation like Loran in that it just involves a clock and a radio and some math. But without the contributions of Einstein to our understanding of space and time, and the corrections we make to time dilation errors because of it, the whole system would be completely worthless.